I want to welcome our worldwide radio and internet TV audience to the regular worship of the Main Street Church of Christ. We want you to know that th through this plague we've gone on and we hadn't missed a beat. And so we want to welcome our plague listeners to www. Go to our website at www.churchofchristpreaching.com. Our worship and our work has gone right on. Last Sunday, William preached a wonderful sermon to you about uh, do you worship at the church that's like the church in Jerusalem or do you worship at the church that's like the church in Laodicea and Revelation that's poor and naked and, and rich and blind and doesn't know that they have need of everything when they think they have need of nothing. The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. The Bible tells us that plainly twice. God is not interested in our buildings. Our buildings are places that we can just use. We have been and we've worshipped here for many, many, many years, and this building is a great convenience. But right now today, we feed 100, 150, 200 of the homeless out the kitchen window. We give them coffee and donuts Tuesday through Friday. On Sunday, we feed right out the kitchen window. We give the Lord's Supper. We go out on the parking lot, give the Lord's Supper, and preach to the poor of the community about the Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship goes on right here in public. Our public worship has gone on here since 1896. Um, most uh, church buildings, big mega churches, are going to go broke during this, uh, this uh, pandemic. Our congregation goes right on because our priorities are in the right place. We've been here in this location since 1896. Uh, the uh, Churches of Christ began sending a, a missionary movement into this area and having, holding tent meetings and stuff in 1896 through 1906. And the first building was built right here behind us on the east side at, at Maine. Uh, in 1906, and, and uh, the worship began here. The city of Dallas approached us, and I've got the documents uh, downstairs. They approached us, and they told us that, that uh, we were in violation of the city code, and they give us a ticket threatening to fine us $2,000 a day because of the poor and the homeless on the lot. And so that makes it where we needed to build a fence around the lot to keep them off of the lot. And so we put a bid out for a fence, and one fence company was 46000 and another fence company was uh, 25000 And in the city, here's a, here's a bid right here for the fence for 25000 So then the city comes back to me, and they said, you don't have a certificate of occupancy. So I show up over at the city offices the very next morning, and sure enough, I go in, and I said, give me the uh, certificate of occupancy for 4301 East Side Avenue, and they said, they didn't want. And so I start going through the microfiche of 4301, 4303, 579, up through 19. We own all those lots. And so I start going through the microfiche, and I found where in the building had burned down in, in 1982, and they'd uh, issued a, a demolition order, and then they had also issued a, a building permit to rebuild a building, and this building was, was uh, rebuilt, and a certificate of occupancy was issued on July the 16th, uh, 2000, uh, excuse me, 1991. Well... I got that number of that certificate of occupancy and went back up to the uh, window and I said, can you look up certificates of occupancy by the number? And they said, yes, we can. And I said, well, look this number up. And he looked the number up and he said, it's blank. I said, print it. Give me a copy of it. I said, now see, this just goes to show what I've been saying all along, that the city fathers recognized in 1991 that we had been here since 1896 and we were grandfathered in and uh, they gave us a blank certificate of occupancy. Either that or you've gone into your computer system and erased our name and erased our doing business as and our address. So one of the two took place. Either the city of Dallas gave us a blank certificate of occupancy or you've erased it from your computer system. 
So right after that, the plague come on the land. Isn't it amazing? So the city, of God has a way of doing away with principalities and powers when they interfere with the preaching of the cross of Christ. I'm telling you, there's no church on earth like Main Street. Big money is trying to push us out of here. They've offered us $4 million for this property. Then we had an oral offer of $5 million. We don't want to sell this property. We want to stay here. They can have part of it. They can build apartments on top of us. They can do all kinds of things that we'd cooperate in helping develop this acre and a half that we have. But you can't have our church, our church here. We're going to have a church here from now on. And so uh, Jesus said that by their fruits you'll know them. And so here are some of our fruits. About, I found out last week that about 60% of our budget goes on worldwide radio and internet. It's spent on, on worldwide radio, the evangelism and internet. About 30% of our budget is spent on the poor and the homeless, hygiene kits, blankets, stuff of that nature that we and others give to the poor and homeless uh, outside. And about 10% of our budget goes to lights, water, gas, and so forth, and we only have one person that we pay a salary to here. We'd like you to go to our website at www.churchofchristpreaching.com or the Main Street Church of Christ in Old East Dallas. Why don't you consider joining with us? We need people who will come here and help William be a member. He's a 2014 graduate of Harding University. He's labored for, for the last five years in this church, and I think that he needs some Harding people to come here and be skeleton to this, this body of believers and help us continue to go forward and conquer the world. We need helpers, people who will help pay for the the uh, radio broadcasts that go out from here to all the earth. A few congregations has helped us, and so we want to be thankful for them. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you so much. We pray that you bless us as long as the plague is on the land. Help us that we can continue to preach the gospel of the whole wide world and not miss a beat in your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we're, I'm teaching a Sunday school lesson on the work of an evangelist, and so I'm going to begin talking about that son. Um, I'll refresh your memory by turning back with me to First, Second uh, Timothy, chapter four, where Paul charges Timothy about the work of an evangelist. He said, "I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom." Preach the word. I can't be found guilty of not doing that. That is the foremost work and, and, and message that an evangelist has. But yet I spend 90% of my time in uh, administrative duties. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Doesn't matter whether you feel like it or not. Reprove. Anybody that acts up, you take them quietly aside and you approve them one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Rebuke. The second time that they act up in public, then you rebuke them in front of God and everybody. Rebuke. Exhort. You try to get people to go back to the Bible. Exhort with all long-suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching. Doctrine and teaching is the same thing. But after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Uh, brethren, we see that right now today. You, the church, are responsible for the problems that you have right now today. You've demanded less than an hour worship service. You've cut your preacher down to 15 minutes. You let him give a little old sermonette. That's not preaching. That's not teaching the Bible. We've witnessed the dumbing down of the churches of Christ in the last 50 years. It's absolutely amazing. And we've gone from first in growth in the world to probably last in growth in the world. The dumbing down of the churches of Christ is amazing. In the 50s, every average member of the church of Christ could sit down with somebody from another denomination and defend the faith. And right now, people can't do that. And Paul says, make full proof of your ministry. I don't know how these preachers who uh, participate in the dumbing down of the church 
uh, can ever consider that they make full proof of their ministry. I showed up here in 1993, the prodigal son of this church. I'm not uh, in any wise worthy to be the minister of this church. I sit down on that back row by, right back there, and I just wanted to go to heaven. I was broke again. Now see, I consider broke anything less than $50,000 cash, you broke. I, um, uh, I've lived uh, a highfalutin life, and I had, a me I had a million dollar environmental engineering company, and I was doing a million a year in sales, digging up underground storage tanks. I've got the third license issued in the state of Texas to dig up underground storage tanks. And I was doing a million a year in sales in 91, 90, 91, 92, 93. And my wife went nine times in a diabetic coma and went in the hospital. And I showed up here on the back road just wanting to go to heaven. And thieves had control of this church. And I walked the aisle, my home congregation, where my grandparents helped start this church in 1903. My parents were married here in, in 1928. My grandfather was buried here in 1930. I was born here in 1944. My parents were buried here in the 1980s. I'm the prodigal son of this church. I really have a dog in this hunt. There was three of us that uh, I was broke again, just wanted to go to heaven. And so I placed membership, walked the aisle, and dedicated the rest of my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Scoggins, the man who had been an elder here 50 years, encouraged me to preach and teach. And, and as the months went by and so forth, there was a bully here. One of the first things we had to do is, is stop that. And so we stopped the bullying of, uh, of the old people that was going on here. And uh, there was three of us who decided that uh, let's be Christians. Let's really be Christians. Fred Vaughn, Bernie Wood, and I were the best of friends, and I just never, ever believed that any of them, I thought the three of us would get back to back and fight the whole world. And we divided up the old people and started taking care of the old people, and, and Bernie Wood started taking care of Ida Jones, and Fred Vaughn started taking care of uh, Flo and, and, and uh, Ed Wren. And I started taking care of Ann Daniels. And then we each had others, but these were the main seniors that we had to look in on every day and take care of and feed and so forth and so on. So we went through many great tribulations and buried probably a hundred old people during that, that, that time, during that generation. It was a wonderful thing, absolutely wonderful thing. Um, some other brethren uh, joined us and helped us. Uh, some congregations uh, began to help us feed. We began to feed the poor and the homeless and uh, Walnut Hill and Webb Chapel and Grapevine and, and now Landmark and DFW has helped us feed some, feed the homeless. And so I really believe in feeding the poor and preaching the gospel to all the world. And uh, I just don't think that there's any work like it on earth. Preaching and teaching of the gospel is the foremost job of an evangelist. The New Testament evangelized men, evangelists evangelized men and towns with the gospel. Best way to understand evangelist is from the old English word herald. It's 10 o'clock and all is well. So a herald announced news. He went through and announced news. You preach the gospel. You don't teach the gospel. You announce the gospel. The gospel is an announcement. The proclamation needs to be limited in certain facts to what Paul says the gospel is, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You look at all the sermons in the book of Acts and in the New Testament, they all have to do with using the Old Testament prophecies to prove that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm telling you, you can't reinvent the wheel. 
the proclamation needs to go out that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, that Jesus Christ is God. He is the man. The New Testament evangelists set men and congregations or groups of believers in order by teaching first principles. Um, the whole work of the whole church is the Great Commission. And anything that doesn't come under the scope of the Great Commission, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, Mark 16, 15, 16. Any work that does not come under the scope of the Great Commission is church work. It's not the work of the church. We need to put the vast majority of everything we have in the work of the church. That's why you see this world all broken up the way it is. These are different radio frequencies to where we conquer the whole earth. The gospel goes out of here three times a day, every day, to the whole world. And it goes out of here seven times on Sunday to the whole world. And it goes out of here eight times to different broadcasts right here in the United States, in uh, Dallas, Abilene, Memphis, Nashville. We need to have it on in all the cities where our schools of preaching are because they need to get a higher education in the, in the Bible than what their colleges and universities and schools of preaching are teaching them. The evangelist uh, uh, work is defined as the manifold wisdom of God in Scripture. An evangelist is a witness where to begin, as Jesus told the apostles, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, and that's what we did here. We began right here in Jerusalem in our own neighborhood, and we started preaching and teaching to this neighborhood. And in Judea, we got on the radio, and we went to all of North Texas, and then Samaria, and then we got on more radio stations, Till finally we went to conquer the whole world. Sixty percent of our budget goes to preaching the gospel to the whole world, not because I want it to be that way, but because God has sent the money. That's where He wanted the money to go. See, you can prepay for these broadcasts, and these are Christians that 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 have pledged to pay for all these broadcasts. This doesn't come out of our contribution. Our contribution goes to feed the poor. We're to be witnesses to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Evangelism of the ungodly is, is uh, in the New Testament sense, has been all but choked out by a failure to recognize the plain, simple meaning of words. I'd like to encourage our radio audience to go to our website at www.churchofchristpreaching.com. The two words, preach and teach, were never confused in the early church. Um, let the evangelists first obtain by preaching and teach first principles, and let the shepherds sustain by fellowship and in teaching to people in general. Uh, today, Preaching and teaching has been uh, replaced with, one, entertainment mostly, jokes, and, and the guy gets up, he reads uh, three scriptures, he tells a joke, and he pontificates for 15 minutes. That's not teaching the Bible. We preach 50 minutes. A 50-minute sermon goes out of here to all the world. We have 52 lessons that we teach the whole earth in a year. That's the high points of the Bible. We are organized in what we're doing. The word preach corrects the preacher, caruso. I preach, kerugma, the speech, preaching, and all its associated words, evangelist, the evangelist, euangelion, the gospel, the evangelu, I preach the gospel, frequently occur in the Greek Christian scriptures. They're completely different words from didiaskala, that's a, a teaching, preaching. How can you uh, confuse Caruso with didiaskala? Entirely different words. But in English, 
preaching teachers become confused with people. Alexander Campbell said regarding this distinction, no two such families of words, of so many branches, and so large a currency, are more distinguishable, are more frequently distinguished in the whole nomenclature of Christian scriptures. And of course, Alexander Campbell also said, no inspired writer ever called a difference in words where there wasn't a difference. Early preaching had not to do with tenets and doctrine, uh, things that you've got to believe that make you different from the Baptists and so forth and so on. Early preaching had to do with precepts that need to be obeyed because the Word has become flesh and died on a tree for you and I. It's to thunder through the lost hearts, mind, and emotion, producing godly sorrow for their sins and Bible repentance. Real belief, which is faith and trust in God with reliance from the heart that Christ died for my sins, my personal sins, according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and my trust with reliance is that He can and will save me must be produced prior to baptism or it's an empty ritual. Previous faith in the blood of Christ and deep unframed repentance before God. Without that, Alexander Campbell said, neither immersion in water or any other actions can uh, secure for us the blessings of peace and pardon. See the Christian Baptist at College Press. The preacher announces the wonderful works of God in Christ. His job is to reason, to state, and to illustrate the great gospel principles. Alexander Campbell often insisted that mere intellectual assent, belief, to the facts of the gospel is not saving faith. The faith that saved, he urged, is not belief in any doctrine or truth abstractly, but belief and trust in Christ, in Him as a person, confidence in Him as a person, that He is my Savior, that He said to me, He that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out, and I'm He and I'm coming to you, and save me from myself. Save me from the devil, save me from sin, save me from myself. That's true faith and trust and confidence in coming to him. The evangelist or preacher was not to announce Christianity, but rather to preach Christ. Sub a subject, teaching of what Christianity is, is teachable, needs to be taught to people right after they become believers. But they need to be converted. They need to have a reason to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Main Street Church of Christ is a church that's dedicated to preaching the gospel to the whole wide world. We go out of here every Sunday with eight broadcasts in the United States. We have 27 international broadcasts through the week. Won't you help us take this gospel to the whole wide world? Every penny that comes in on PayPal now is going to world evangelism. We're going to conquer the world for Christ. Long after we're dead, we're going to be preaching these 52 lessons to the world because it's an unchanging need for the world to hear these unchangeable truths Jesus in Genesis, Jesus in Exodus, Jesus throughout the Old Testament, Jesus in his, his parables, in His teaching, in His death, burial, and resurrection. The church and the second coming of Christ is what these 52 lessons made, are made up of. So again, we'd like you to come to our website at www.churchofchristpreaching.com. There's a thousand lessons on there. You can do anything uh, with that, and I know that you can do anything with nothing. Paul told Timothy, make full proof of that ministry. That's exactly what we're trying to do. 
by feeding 150 people a day here and on Sunday more than that. We take a whole van load of bread and give it out out there to the poor. What is your church able to do during these times of plagues? God might just be taking away our ability to worship Him the way that we have for many years. Maybe He's tired of that type of temple worship that He had in Jerusalem. You know, He destroyed that temple because it had all the outward signs but no fruit. It had all the outward rituals. The temple in 586 B.C. when it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, on the ninth day of Av, that temple had, was doing all the right ritualistic worship. And that temple in 70 A.D. that was destroyed in Jerusalem was doing all the right ritualistic worship, except they had no fruit. No faith in God, taking care of the poor, preaching the gospel to the whole world. Won't you join with us? That's www.churchofchristpreaching.com. Get a hold of me. Give me a call. Let's talk.